The last speaker is Mark from New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. Okay, I, I'm going to change topics a little bit and talk about um, really some exciting emerging studies that are being done using magnetotellurics, both uh, in continental venues and also in marine venues, combined with mathematical modeling to um, reveal new groundwater resources that have yet to be developed uh, in, in some of these cases. So the, the first is looking at offshore groundwater, fresh offshore groundwater in the continental shelves. It's a global phenomenon. Why, why is it there? Well, on average, over the last two million years, uh, sea level was 40 meters lower than present, and uh, just 21,000 years ago, sea level was um, 120 meters below uh, its current elevation, and the shoreline was much further off, exposing vast quantities of the continental shelf to uh, meteoric recharge. Uh, there's also onshore connections to um, um, aquifer systems that crop, the aquifers crop out on shore, and the gradients are higher during these sea level low stands. Um, as I said, it's a global phenomenon. This is a, a paper by Vincent Post and uh, uh, our group that tried to quantify the volumes of offshore freshwater uh, within uh, 50 kilometers of the shoreline. We estimate that there's 10 to the fifth cubic kilometers of uh, freshwater um, uh, globally. Uh, we've also tried to test, there's only a few sites where there's actually well data, and those estimates were based on uh, essentially six cross sections where we could put together salinity contour maps. We've also developed models of uh, the New England area and confirmed that between one and 10 cubic kilometers per lateral distance of the shoreline per kilometer shoreline, this freshwater exists. What's truly exciting uh, is that now marine magnetotellurics uh, are being used. This was developed to explore for oil, but is now being used to look for freshwater. This is a great study just out two weeks ago by Chloe Gustafson, Carrie Key, and Rob Evans um, uh, at Lamont Doherty and Woods Hole. Um, the map on the uh, right show uh, MT images of uh, freshwater, that's the yellow uh, patterns, uh, resistive uh, formation resistivities can be imaged uh, on the offshore. Um, and two sites they looked at, Martha's Vineyard in New Jersey, um, and they deployed both uh, marine magnetotelluric systems on the uh, seafloor, and then they had a controlled source um, electromagnetic system that was towed behind a boat and they did joint inversions. But it's amazing, this is really, I think, transformative that we'll be able to map offshore freshwater. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to switch topics to using MT to look at deep crystalline basement groundwater flow systems in the arid southwest. Um, 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 Companies, agribusinesses have been using this hot water uh, and fresh water to grow tilapia, to uh, heat greenhouses and actually use the water in greenhouses. Uh, New Mexico is blessed with uh, uh, permeable crystalline rocks um, and high heat flow. Um, one specific study that we've been working on is looking at the plumbing of deep groundwater flow in the crystalline basement below the Truth or Consequences uh, uh, town. It, has, it was formerly called Hot Springs, New Mexico. There's about 12 spas. Uh, the salinity of this uh, geothermal water that's coming right out of the crystalline basement is 42 degrees. Well, it's, it's 1,900 milligrams per liter, 42 degrees C. It has carbon-14 uh, age dates of 6,000 to 11,000 years old. Uh, and it's, we believe it's coming from deep recharge in the mountainous terrains about 60 kilometers away, but the uh, temperatures are quite warm and shallow. C.V. Tice estimated that back in the 40s that the uh, geothermal discharge was 2 million gallons per day. We estimate that's about 10% of the mountain front recharge is actually discharging through a hydrologic window where the crystalline basement is exposed uh, essentially at the land surface. There are no confining units to block um, the discharge coming to the surface. Um, the recharge rates for this mountainous terrains are probably five centimeters to 10 centimeters a year. This is a nice uh, study of uh, recharge by Fred Phillip and Dan Cadall's group. 
Um, we've developed this conceptual model of deep groundwater flow. We've convinced ourselves through numerical modeling that um, it has to be a very deep, 10 kilometer deep flow system, probably with crystalline basement permeabilities that are unheard of, 10, 10 to the negative 12th meters squared. We conducted an MT study um, of this region from the recharge to the discharge area. Jeff Pepin, my grad student, led the, led the uh, charge on that. And here's the amazing results that in the recharge areas up in the mountains of Alamosa Creek and Chichio Negro, you can see um, more resistive um, crystalline basement rocks in the recharge area around 100 O meters to 200 O meters. That's quite a bit more permeable or more conductive than typical crystalline basin rock, which is 1,000 to 10,000 O meters. But in the discharge area down by the hot springs districts, we see um, as these geothermal fluids pick up heat and salinity along the flow path, they become more conductive. And you can image the upflow zone down to 10 kilometers. Um, and you cannot produce the thermal anomalies or the salinity without this deep flow system. Um, um, you might question, well, how, how can you have uh, a Darcy permeability at 10 kilometers? Well, um, Jim Butler helped us analyze a pumping test in the shallow crystalline basement uh, within the hot springs district of the TRC, and we got permeabilities. Uh, we saw inertial effects uh, within the pump test and a permeability of uh, ten, uh, three times 10 to the negative 10th meters squared. Um, I'd just like to point out that these, these deep-seated crystalline basement flow systems are economically important to the local community, communities in the arid southwest in, in uh, Wilcox, Arizona. There's a geothermal greenhouse that's been drilled into vitri There's a geothermal well in vitrified tufts at about a kilometer depth that's producing over 1,000 gallons per minute in 80 degrees C water. They're using the water to, to grow uh, tomatoes. There's also this amazing aquaculture facility in Lordsburg, New Mexico. These are deep flow systems with no local recharge. So I'd just like to conclude by saying that there are huge volumes of offshore freshwater are sequestered in continental shelf sands. This is a new resource potentially available to coastal megacities. Um, crystalline basement um, and volcan volcanic formations represent a viable resource in, for arid southwestern communities. I, I call it the ultimate food, water, and energy nexus. Um, these greenhouse operations pay for themselves. They don't need government uh, money. They essentially have free heat uh, and, and sus uh, sustainable water. And uh, I think an exciting thing to think about in the future is using magnetotelluric surveys in an earth scope style campaign to look at deep flow systems and deep uh, unconventional aquifers in the U.S. and continental shelf. Thanks.